Is there any opportunity to use an open policy? Um, I had an extra credit part for it uh, for a while, um, but last time, last last year when I bought the class, we didn't really have enough time to really go over open phone. Yeah. Um, if you want, um, I'll still offer extra credit for it, but just we won't have time to cover it in the class. If I, if, what's the extra credit? So if you can simulate the project in open phone. Oh, okay. um, on top of what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. So you still need to do the code no matter yeah, what, okay. but the open phone, I can do a little bit. Okay. So yeah. Open phone.
All right, it's uh, five thirty. Let's go and get started. All right, good evening, everyone. How's uh, how's everyone doing today? Uh, I'm a little under the weather. Um, so you know, last week I was hungover. This week I'm, I'm sick, maybe sick from being hungover. Um, so I'm coughing a little bit. So that's that's kind of why I have the mask on. So hopefully I don't uh, spread I'm like, <laughs> everywhere in the class. Um, okay. Um, so the plan for this week, so we, we don't have the midterm this week. I know the original schedule said we had the midterm this Wednesday, but uh, I wanted to push it back just because, you know, we were a little bit behind. Um, and so the midterm is going to be next Monday, okay? a week from today. Um, uh, so today what I did <laughs> is I, uh, I posted a study guide, um, for the midterm online. And so you should be able to see that in weeks, uh, in week 13. Okay. So click on week, the week 13 page for our class. Uh, one of the files you'll see there at the bottom is the study guide for the midterm. Okay. Um, and so let me break this here too. So in terms of content, uh, what's going to be on the midterm is going to be all the content from homework four and homework five. Okay. <clears throat> and so those should be the homeworks that you uh, should study for the for the midterm. Okay. Um, so all this convection stuff with finite volume, that's not going to be on midterm, but the diffusion with finite volume stuff is going to be on there. Right? So basically what, you, what you're what you responsible for studying for the exam is uh, all the unsteady stuff. So that's the homework for all the explicit Euler, implicit Euler stuff, as well as the diffusion with finite volume stuff, which was the subject of homework five uh, that you guys just turned in on Friday. Okay. And so I'm hoping to grade homework, uh, homework five tomorrow so that you'll have the, uh, so that I can post the solutions for that afterwards. Um, and so that should be that should be tomorrow. OK. And just like the first midterm, I plan on recording a review video. Um, that's going to be um, I'm going to plan on recording that on Wednesday. Okay? So you can expect to see that on Wednesday afternoon. Okay? All right. So just like the first midterm, um, you know, you can expect problems, you know, very similar to the homework. So uh, and specifically, you know, problem two of the, of the last two homeworks. So there's going to be no MATLAB on the exam. It's going to be just that, you know, testing you guys on setting up the problems uh, as well as the conceptual stuff. Okay, So just like the first exam, I plan on having four short answer questions, um, four or five short answer questions and two problem solving questions. Okay? So you can expect you can definitely expect one problem from homework four and one problem from homework five in terms of you know how to set those up in terms of algebraic equation. Okay? So it should be a good balance in between those two. two homeworks. Um, OK. So there, uh, there is one more homework uh, for this class. It's mostly on the higher order stuff that we're going to go over after the midterm. Um, that's mostly just because you know the higher order stuff. Um, it is part of it is part of your final project, and so I didn't want to just kind of throw you guys to the wolves for that for the final project. So I at least want to give you some practice with it with homework six, um, and then you can get some feedback on it. You can see the solutions for that, just so that it'll help you for the final final project. Uh, okay, so I think that's all my announcements. Are there uh, any questions I can answer before we get started for today? Okay, all right. So I think last time, uh, last time we were here, you know, we were covering the theory behind convection with finite volumes, and so I wanted to start today with an example. Okay. So let's start with an example. So our example it looks like the following. So we have five du dx minus eight d squared um, u. I'm oh, sorry, wrong class. This should be d phi dx d squared phi dx squared. Okay, is it two three x? And in this case, it's going to be between zero and one, just like it normally is. 
we have our boundary conditions. And so our first boundary condition is we have a Dirichlet boundary condition on the left. If P of zero is equal to 10. And our second boundary condition is uh, the Neumann boundary condition on the right. And so remember the way that we define that for convection problems now is we're gonna say the overall flux or the overall transport of the solution across the right boundary um, is gonna be three. All right, and so what we want to do for this problem, at, at least at first, uh, is we're going to do hand calculations. And so we're going to compute the four uh, finite volume equations for a grid with four cells. Okay. So our grid is going to look like the following. And so we have our two endpoints here. There are four cells. So we have cell one, cell two, cell three, cell four. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and mark out the, the center, the locations of the cell centers here. Okay, so let's start with X1. And so with four cells, we know that the length of each cell, or delta x, is going to be 0 0.25. Okay, so it's just going to be one divided by the, the length, the length of our domain, which is one, divided by the number of cells, which is four. So that gives us 0 0.25. Okay. And so the cell centers for the first cell is going to be 0 0.125. Uh, for cell two, it's going to be 0 0.375. For cell three, we have 0 0.625, cell four, we have 0 0.875. Okay, and so we have four equations that we need to, to do. So we have a, an equation for cell one, an equation for cell two, an equation for cell three, and for cell four. Um, all right. Any uh, any questions on on just the setup of the problem here? Okay. All right. So let's let's start with the uh, let's start with the two interior cells. Those are going to be the easiest for us. So cells two and three interior. And so let's write those uh, write those out first. Okay. And so if you remember from last time, we derived the following uh, equation for interior cells based on you know our finite volume um, finite volume um, method. Okay. And so for interior cells, we have the following: a minus u divided by two minus k over delta x times b sub l plus two k over delta x times b sub c plus u divided by two minus k over delta x b sub r is equal to q of x c delta x. Where for this particular problem, we have u, our convection velocity here is equal to five, our diffusion coefficient here is equal to eight, okay? You may be tempted to think that the k is minus eight here, but remember the diffusion term normally is on the same side as the source term. So when we move it over to the other side, um, a negative shows up. And so in this case, our k is just a positive eight, okay? And our q, our source term in this case is three x, okay? and so we're going to apply that at our um, at our cell centers. Of course, delta x 
already written it above, delta X is 0 0.25, okay? Um, so before we apply this to cells two and three, you know, because the velocities and because the diffusion coefficients, uh, and I guess the grid spacing for that matter too, uh, they don't change, um, they don't change depending on where we are, we can go ahead and compute um, all these coefficients. All coefficients are constant. And so if we if we just put kind of we just plug in those numbers, we get minus 34.5 P sub L plus 64 P sub C minus 29.5 P sub R is equal to three over four X sub C. All right, so I just all I did was I plugged in for all the coefficients for the velocities uh, and the diffusion coefficients. Okay. So let's apply this to cells two and three. So for cell two, okay, we have minus 34, 5. The left neighbor for cell two is cell one. Okay, so that's going to be uh, minus 34.5 D1 plus 64 D2 minus 29.5. Right neighbor for cell two is V3. All this is equal to three fourths times X2. X2 we know is 0 0.375. All right, so let's apply the same thing for, for cell three. So for cell three, we have minus 34.5. So two plus 64, P sub three minus 29.5, P sub four is equal to three fourths. And then we're gonna go three. So X three is 0 0.625. So that's two out of the four equations that we that we need. So for the interior cells, remember, um, and for interior nodes as well, you know, whenever you have neighbors on all sides of your of your cell, uh, you can go ahead and just apply the interior cell um, equations. Okay, for cells one and set, and for cells one and four, um, you know, we have to of course account for the boundary conditions, uh, and we'll do that kind of you know we'll go that we'll go from the beginning just so that you kind of see the whole the whole process. Okay. Okay, so let's start with the cell one. Okay, so cell one has a Dirichlet boundary condition on its left side. Just like we saw with diffusion for finite volumes, you know, the way we're going to do this, at least initially, is we're going to start from the, um, you know, start from the finite volume equation, or just kind of the more general one, before we start plugging in um, cell center values. So another way we can say it is we're going to start from the form of the equation that has the flux terms. Okay, so you can almost think of it as like the flux form for the finite volume equations. Okay, and so that those equations look like the following. So we have a u uh, times phi minus k d phi dx 
Everything in, the, in these brackets are evaluated at the right cell edge. Or in other words, you know, we evaluate everything, all those quantities at the interface between, you know, the, the center cell and the right cell. Okay. Minus the same thing, evaluate it at the left cell. Okay. We have U times B, it's K, DP, DX. Evaluate it X sub L. Okay. And all this is equal to Q. Uh, at xc times delta x. Okay. All right. So the above equation that we had for the interior cells, remember, we derived it from this equation. So this is kind of like the same thing as as this uh, as this equation up here. Okay. It's the same thing as that equation, except this is kind of a few steps up in the derivation. Okay. But remember, the reason we like to start here is that it's it's a lot easier to apply boundary conditions on this term, on this uh, on this expression, uh, rather than the other. Okay? okay. And so the question is, you know, which of these terms are going to be modified because of the derivative boundary condition? Okay. Okay. So let's start with the uh, the quantities at the right cell. Edge. Okay. So the right cell edge is going to be the one that um, you know on the right of cell one. Okay. If you look at cell one up here from the diagram, okay, cell one is right here in the square brackets. And so on the to the right of cell one, we have cell two. And so that means this quantity here, which is evaluated, okay. which is evaluated x sub r, this remains unchanged. Meanwhile, the quantity on X sub L, um, we are going to modify this uh, according to the Dirichlet boundary condition. Because if we were cell one, you know, we don't have a left neighbor. And so, um, you know, there's uh, there's no way we can evaluate that for a left neighbor. So. Okay, so let's go ahead and evaluate this. And so for the part that remains unchanged, let me go ahead and write in the expression for that. Okay. We have U times V2 plus V1. Over two. Minus K V2 times V1 divided by delta X. <laughs> All right, so that's what we normally plug in for uh, for that flux expression. And so when we have a neighbor, we can put those all those flux terms in terms of the neighboring cell and the center cell. Okay, so in this case it's V2 and V1. Uh, for the right. It's going to look like the following, or for the left. Okay. And so for the left, we have U So first we have the convection term. So first we have U times phi, where phi itself is evaluated at the at the back, at the edge of the cell. Okay. And so when we have a Dirichlet boundary condition, we know we know exactly what that um, value of phi is at the uh, at the boundary of the cell. Okay. So this phi naught right here is the Dirichlet value. It's defined, it's defined right at the edge of the cell. So that part is, is good. 
Next, we have the derivative terms. So we have minus k, and we have b1 minus b naught, all divided by delta x divided by 2. So same thing we did in diffusion. So we just take the difference between the, uh, the cell center value, which is b1, minus the Dirichlet value, which is b naught, all divided by the cell length divided by 2. Right-hand side here stays the same. So our right-hand side is going to be 3xc times delta x. Okay, and so from here, we're going to simplify the expression. And so on the left-hand side, anything with phi2 and phi1, we're going to keep over there because those are the unknown terms. And so we're going to combine those like terms. Uh, and then any term involving the um, involving the Dirichlet boundary condition, phi0, uh, we're going to move that over to the right-hand side, okay? So if we do that, I'll give you the symbolic expression for it, and then we'll plug in the numbers for it. And if we do that, we get... B divided by two plus three k over delta x times v one plus u divided by two minus k divided by delta x uh, times v two. Okay. All this is equal to three over four x sub c plus u times v naught plus 2k v naught all divided by delta x. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in the numbers. So once we plug in the numbers, we'll uh, have our equation here for cell one. Rishi value was 10. And our velocity in this problem was 5. Okay. So you have plus 5 times 10 plus 2 times 8. 2 times 8 times the Rishi value, which is 10, all divided by 0 0.2. For some reason in my notes, I didn't fully calculate this, but you know, of course you would punch all of that into a calculator and compute its, its value. All right, any questions on, on this part here? All right, so that's the equation for cell one. So now we have to do the equation for cell four. And so for cell four, we have a Neumann boundary condition on, on the right. So once again, I'm going to start from the from the flux form of our finite volume equations, and so we have u p minus k p x, all evaluated at x sub r minus k p dx, all evaluated at x sub l is equal to. Q 
C times delta X, okay? <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and look at these two flux terms and then see, you know, which remains unchanged and which do we need to replace with the boundary condition, okay? And so remember, we, we've moved to cell four right now. So cell four is on the very right-hand side of the domain, okay? And so when you're on the very right-hand side of the domain, that means the neighbor that we have is going to be on the left. So this left flux term is going to remain unchanged. While the right flux term, we're going to replace that with the Neumann, Neumann condition. All right, so the Neumann condition in this case, uh, we'll just, I'll just give it a symbol gamma. Okay. Whereas the term on the, on the left, is going to remain unchanged. So we have gamma minus u v3 plus v4 divided by 2 minus k v4 minus v3 divided by delta x is equal to u3 times xc times delta x. Okay. So just like we did with the Dirichlet boundary condition, we're going to simplify this, uh, combine like terms. We're also going to take the Neumann boundary condition and just move it to the other side. So if we do that, we get the following expression. So we have a minus u divided by two minus k over delta x sub l plus minus u divided by two plus k divided by delta x sub c, where phi sub c in this case is phi four and phi sub l in this case is phi three. This is equal to um, Q, I guess we can just plug in 3XC delta X minus gamma. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and plug in the numbers for this one. So plugging the numbers, we'll officially apply this to cell four. And so we have minus 34.5 V sub three plus 29.5 V sub four is equal to three fourths. Okay, so that three fourths comes from three times delta X because delta X is 0 0.25. And so the same, that's the same thing as dividing by four, okay? X four, in this case is 0 0.875 minus the Neumann value, which is three. Okay. Any questions on uh, any questions on this? Okay, all right, so that's the hand calculation portion of this of this problem. And so, um, you know, so we have our four equations here, right? Uh, next thing I wanna show you is, you know, how to implement this in code, right? But as we implement this in code, I want you to kind of uh, take note that, you know, remember we have three, we have kind of three cases here. And so we have the case where, you know, if we had an interior cell, uh, then our equation takes a certain form. Uh, if we're on the left boundary, if we're on cell one, then we have to account for the Dirichlet boundary condition. 
But if we're on the very right side of the domain, uh, we have a different case, and that's going to be for the Neumann bound. Okay? And so you're going to see all three of these cases show up in the code uh, in the form of, of an if statement. But just kind of remember that these are the three cases that we um, that we have specified. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, bring up my computer screen here. Okay. Uh, so this is the code. So I posted this onto Canvas. And so this is a, uh, you know, a fully completed code. So you don't have to do anything for this. But let's go through it together to kind of see uh, all the different parts. Okay. And so just like uh, we normally do for these types of codes, we have a section one. Section one here is, is where we set all the simulation parameters. And so we have n is equal to 10. So in this case, we're running a simulation with 10 cells. Um, we define the grid spacing size. We define the location of all the cell centers. Okay. We have the left-hand side matrix, the right-hand side vector, um, as well as the problem parameters. And so we have k and u. Okay. Okay. So now we get down to the uh, to the equations. Okay. And so you can see here that we have a for loop. And so just like we normally do, we're going to loop over all of the cells. Okay. So we're going to visit every single one. And we have our three cases here. Okay. I'll go over the boundary condition cases second because those are a uh, you know a little more complicated. Uh, but let's look at the case when we're at an interior cell. So you know it's uh, the interior cell cases here at the bottom. And so if you look at the coefficients, if you look back in your notes uh, for the coefficients for our general equation, um, for the center cell for phi sub c, our coefficient is two times k divided by delta x, okay? For the right neighbor, so that's gonna be i cell plus one, we have um, u divided by two minus k over delta x. And then for the left neighbor, we have a minus u over two minus k over delta x, okay? And so you could see, uh, you could see that all these coefficients are being set in the proper place. Okay? And then on the right hand side, we have the the source term. So you have three times x c uh, times um, d x. Okay. All right. So that's the interior cell. So remember, the interior cells are always the easiest uh, part. And, and you know, for finite volumes, you know, hopefully you're seeing a trend here where you know we usually put the interior cells as the else condition. Okay. Because uh, for the if statements, you know, we we usually reserve those for when we're at a uh, at a boundary. So let's start on the left first. And so if the loop variable, if the loop index here is one, uh, that means we're visiting the first cell. So this is cell one. OK. And then on the left side of the cell, we have a Dirichlet boundary condition. And so we need to modify this equation according to that Dirichlet condition. Um, so first we have the uh, coefficient for P sub C. And so the coefficient for phi sub c from our notes, you can see is u divided by two uh, plus three k divided by delta x, okay? Uh, for the right neighbor here, we have u divided by two uh, minus k over, over delta x. <laughs> and on the right-hand side, we have um, our, um, uh, our source term, which is three times delta x times xc. And then we have our Dirichlet boundary condition contribution. So we have u times 10, where 10 is the value of the Dirichlet condition. And then we have the uh, 2 times k times 10 divided by delta x. Um, and so that's the other contribution from the diffusion term. Okay. Uh, and then finally, we have the contribution. And then finally, we have the equation for the Neumann boundary condition. And so that's what this LSIB is for. Right. Um, and so if I cell is equal, equal to n, that means we're on the very right side of the domain. So we're on the very right, rightmost cell. Okay, we have a Neumann boundary condition. Our coefficients are the following. And so for B sub C, uh, we have a minus U divided by two um, plus K over delta X. Okay? And then for the left neighbor, phi sub L, we have a minus U divided by two minus K over delta X. Okay? And then for the right-hand side of the equation, we have three, um, times xc times delta x minus three, or three here is the Neumann, uh, Neumann result or Neumann boundary condition. Okay. And so for 1D, for 1D, we only need one loop. And so, you know, we, uh, we just loop through all of those, okay? From there, we can solve the solution. 
and then we can plot it. And so for this particular problem, I have plotted the exact solution as well. So I solved this problem by hand, um, and this is the exact solution. Okay. Let me go ahead and run it. And so you can see here, even with 10 cells, uh, I guess it's a little bit hard to see because of the uh, they're kind of right on top of each other. Uh, but you can see we get a very close result you know, with 10 cells and our, our finite volume solution almost matches the exact solution pretty much exactly. The only place where you can see a little bit of difference is maybe around kind of this area right here. It's a little bit hard to see. I mean, if I zoom in, you can kind of see it. Yeah, so if you zoom in, you can kind of see a little bit of a difference between the two, but it's not, uh, it's not that much. Okay. Uh, any questions on on this on this code here? Okay. Not on the code, but could you explain why the flux term combines the conversion and diffusion? Yeah, no, it's a good question. So, so tradition, so we're kind of changing the definition for the Neumann condition a little bit because traditionally, up to this point, we've considered Neumann conditions as the derivative of the solution. Uh, but traditionally, you know, especially in in thermal fluids um, type problems, uh, whenever you talk about a um, like a Neumann condition, you're normally looking at like flux of the solution. Um, so it's a little bit more traditional in terms of how you know, heat transfer and mass transfer is actually defined. Um, up to this point, I've used the derivative definition just because it's, it's a bit more convenient in terms of what we've been doing, but but the flux definition is, is more, is yeah, it's, it's usually combined the two. Yeah, because it combines both the diffuse and, and the convection flux. Right. Any other questions on, on this example here before we jump to 2D stuff? Okay, all right, so let me go ahead and switch back to the iPad here. <coughs> okay, and so let's go over 2D. So now let's do the same thing. So we're gonna do uh, tackle diffusion and convection, but we're gonna do it in 2D now. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So things. So the so the algebra for this uh, it is going to get a little bit hairy. You know, there there are a lot of terms to keep in track of, but just remember that you know we're we're going through the same process that we did before. Okay. And so we're going to start with our governing equation. We're going to apply integrals to the entire equation. Um, we're going to apply your integration rules, uh, and then we're going to get you know eventually we're going to get to a place where we have coefficients for each of the neighboring cells. Okay. And so just like we did with 2D diffusion, we're going to start with the vector form um, of our governing equation. And so the vector form for our governing equation is the following. And so we have the divergence, velocity vector times V, K, divergence of the gradient of V, is equal to the source term. Okay. So this is the pure kind of a, uh, you know, governing equation here, no finite difference, no finite volume applied to it at all. Okay. So let's take this equation here, let's integrate it over the cell. Since we're in 2D, we have a double integral. So we have double integral over the cell area. <coughs> A 
minus k double integral of the gradient dA equal to two double integral q x y dA. All right, so these are rather complicated integrals to uh, to to compute. So let's go ahead and simplify this. So for this one right here, let's go ahead and convert this. Convert these to line integrals using the divergence theorem. We can apply it to both because both have a divergence term inside it. Okay. And so remember, that's the reason why I write it in this form is so that divergence uh, comes out. Okay. For the source term integral, we're going to do what we usually do, and we're going to evaluate this using the trapezoidal rule. You know, you may be wondering, um, you know, why don't we just apply the trapezoidal rule to the integrals on the left, right? Trapezoidal rule is pretty easy. Uh, the reason for that is on the left, you know, we have all these derivative terms. So, you know, it, it becomes a lot more difficult to uh, apply trapezoidal rule, you know, we don't have those derivative terms. We don't even, we don't even have the solution yet. So we don't even have phi yet. Um, and so, you know, we need to convert those integrals, but we can't evaluate them. Yet, right? We can apply trapezoidal rule on the right because we already know um, you know, what the what the source term looks like, okay? Um, and so evaluating that is is very is very easy. Okay. okay, so if we do this, end up with on the left hand side, you know, since they both have the same, <coughs> well, they both have the same type of integral, and we're converting them all the same. I'm going to stick them all into one integral here. Okay. So we have phi. And v, uh, times u dot product of m minus k gradient of p dot product of m ds equal to q at xc yc delta x delta y. Okay, so the right-hand side of this expression, the, the source term is all, is all done. There's, there's nothing more we can do on that side, uh, but we can work on the left-hand side here quite a bit, okay? So remember what this represents. This represents a line integral that goes around, the, uh, goes around all the edges of, the, of our finite volume cell. So visually, it looks like this. So here is our finite volume cell in 2D. How we're going to integrate this is we're going to basically walk around the outside of the cell. Okay. We're going to follow a path. We're going to follow a path that looks just like.
Just like we did in 2D diffusion, we're going to break up this integral into four separate um, integrals. Remember, what's unique about each side of this, of, this, uh, of this square here is the normal vector, okay? So each side here has a, is going to have a different normal vector. And so on the east side, the normal vector points in a horizontal direction. That's so it's one comma zero. Um, on the north side, the normal vector is going to point up. And so that's zero comma one. On the west side, the normal vector is going to point to the left. And so that's uh, minus one comma zero. And on the south side, the normal vector is going to point down. And so that's zero comma minus one. Okay. So the normal vector, the normal vector is important here because if you look at the, at the integral that we're looking to evaluate, we have uh, in both in both expressions, in both the convection and the diffusion term, we have something dot product with the normal vector. Okay. Let me go ahead and highlight that for you. So for the diffusion term, we have uh, u, which is the velocity vector dot product with the normal vector. Okay. For the diffusion term, we have the gradient of phi dot product with n. And so that's going to be another dot product. Okay. Let me write out what these look like. And so the u vector, this simply just going to be u comma uh, v, right? So that's the x component of the velocity u um, and the y component of the velocity v. Okay. Remember the gradient of phi, the way we evaluate this is partial phi partial x. So the x component and partial phi partial y for the y component, okay? okay? And so knowing this information and knowing what the normal vectors are, you know, we're gonna take a separate dot product between these on each edge of the cell. And so, for example, on the east uh, face here, on the east edge, okay? so I'm going to say the integral on the east edge is going to be phi times u dot product minus k okay? <clears throat> gradient of phi dot product with m ds, okay? And so if we plug in for u and the gradient of phi as well as the normal vector, okay? So on the east edge, the normal vector is one comma zero, okay? So if we plug that in, we get integral on the east edge of phi times u minus k. The dot product between the gradient of phi and n is just gonna be partial phi partial x. All right, so now that we've simplified this as much as we can, uh, there's really not much more we can do. Let's evaluate this on the east edge using our trapezoid rule. So this becomes d sub little e times u minus k partial phi partial x. I do the same thing for all the other um, all the other sides. Okay. <coughs> Let's do it for the south uh, the south edge. 
this one, we have B times U dot product of N minus K radius of B dot product of N. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and so we plug in for that, noting that our normal vector here is zero comma minus one, right? Of S, uh, K. Partial phi partial y evaluated on the south uh, on the south edge, okay. Times delta x, or delta y up, up here, okay. So we need the edge length whenever we're performing the trapezoidal rule. West, the integral on the west of edge, B times U minus K. DS. Okay. All right, so all of this is going to be evaluated on the west edge of the cell, noting that our normal vector here is minus one comma zero. So if we do that, we get a minus the sub W times U plus K partial feet partial X evaluated on the west edge. Okay. I'll multiply by delta Y. Have the same thing for the north. So in the north, we have B u vector dot n hat minus k gradient to phi dot n hat ds equal to e sub n times v minus. A partial phi partial y the north edge <clears throat> so these are the values of, the, of our four our four integrals okay let me go ahead and box them because these are these will be important once we apply boundary conditions <laughs> Any questions on how uh, how we obtain these uh, these four equations here? Okay, all right. So let me let me take note of these equations because these these this form of the equation is important, and so these are the flux form of our uh, finite volume equations in two D. So these forms are important to know because you know when we when we go to apply boundary conditions, you know we'll usually start on this form right here, okay, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll go from there. All right, we're not we're not quite at the uh, at the part where you know we can have an interior cell equation, uh, but these but this form is nice for when we apply the boundary conditions. Okay? Uh, but we still have we still have a bit of work to do before we can get to the uh, interior cell uh, equations. Okay.
<laughs> all right. So the next step in the process is to replace all of the cell edge quantities. So basically all the fee values with the lowercase letter and replace those with the uh, with uh, expressions using the cell center value. Because let me let me go ahead and draw this for you. So here is our cell as well, which is four neighboring cells. Okay. We have B sub C. That's the uh, that's the center cell. We have B sub big N, so that's the north neighbor. B sub E which is the east neighbor. Sub W is the west neighbor. B e sub S, which is the south neighbor, okay? So what we've done so far is we've, uh, we've evaluated our governing equations on each edge of the center cell, okay? Well, we've obtained our expressions that are, you know, right in between the cells. So this is the little e portion, okay? This is the little m portion. This right here is a little w. And this right here, s is really hard to tell, but you know, pretend that's a, a tiny s, okay? So everything that we have so far in the flux version of our equations are at the cell edges, okay? which is not that useful for us because remember, we wanna solve for the solution that the cell centers, okay? And so we need a little bit of approximation here in order to get those cell center quantities. Okay? In fact, we have, eight, we have eight such cell edge expressions in our previous four integrals. Okay? Okay. So we're going to take all eight of those expressions and then replace them um, with expressions that include these the self center values. So I'll give you a couple examples, and then um, you know, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and write out what all the four integrals are. Okay. A common theme that you'll see, you know, now that we're in convection for two D, is that we're going to evaluate each of the four integrals individually. And so you'll see me kind of break up the, uh, the calculations in terms of those four integrals pretty well. Okay. All right, so let's do, let's do the expressions on the east, on the east first. Okay. And so for the east integral, we have phi sub little e. Okay. So phi sub little e, uh, that's the value of phi itself on the east face, okay, or the east edge. And so one way we can approximate this is as the average of the cell center value of the two neighboring cell center values. Okay, so we have P sub little e is equal to P sub big C plus P sub big E divided by two. Okay. And then we also have the solution derivative. So we have dP dx on the east edge. So we approximate this using our usual forward difference. And so we have phi sub big E minus phi sub C all divided by delta X. And so if we plug that in, So we plug this into the east integral. What we get is integral on the east side, e u dot n hat minus k gradient of v dot n hat 
Bs is equal to V sub C plus V sub E divided by two delta Y minus V sub big E minus V sub C divided by delta X times K Y, okay? So all I did was I took our previous expression for the East integral. So that was the first one that we that we showed up here. Okay. And everywhere I had, we had a face value or, or an edge value, I replaced it with the corresponding, um, you know, cell center values. Okay. All right. So we're going to do the same for all the integrals here. So, um, for the, so for the South integral, we have integral of phi times u dot n times minus k gradient to phi dot n ds is equal to minus. Remember, we have the minus sign because the, the normal vector on the south edge is, is minus. Okay. And so for the south, uh, for the south side, we have um, you know phi um, sub s big S plus phi sub uh, big C divided by two uh, times v delta x plus uh, phi sub big C minus phi sub s divided by delta y, all multiplied by k delta x. So for the west integral, we have phi u dot n hat. <coughs> Yes, okay. minus P W P sub C divided by two times U delta Y plus So that's the west integral. Okay. And then we have one more for the north integral. So those are our four integral uh, expressions. So the algebra is quite a bit more complicated. So there's there's a lot more terms to kind of keep in, keep track of here, um, you know. Uh, but you know, again, you know, I'm I'm kind of showing you kind of every step in this process just so that you know you you kind of understand where every term comes from. Because next, I'm going to show you the equation for the interior cells. And so you know, in order to get that equation for the interior cells, all you have to do is just add up these four integrals. Here, right? uh, but you know, I want you guys to kind of understand and kind of you know appreciate that you know it took. You know, it took quite a while to, to get here. Okay. In fact, you know, let's uh, let's go ahead and box these four equations because these are also going to be useful later. I don't think we'll have time to do an, an example today. Uh, we'll probably save that for um, for Wednesday.
right, any questions on these uh, on these um, four integral equations here? <laughs> what to get? To get our single finite volume equation for the cell, you know, all we have to do is we have to add up all four of these integral uh, expressions. Here. What this will do is this is going to form the left hand side of our finite volume equation. So a lot of these terms are going to cancel out. Um, in fact, you know, I'll tell you which terms cancel out just now. And so every term that involves convection, so anything that's multiplied by U or V uh, that involves the center cell, V sub C, uh, all of those are going to cancel out. Okay. So I'm going to skip a lot of those steps. And so you can uh, you can go ahead and verify those yourself. But you know, I did want to make sure I get to the finite volume equation uh, before I spill my snot all over this desk. Then. So you're going crazy. Okay. So after simplifying finding like terms, the following expressions so we have you. Delta divided by two minus K times phi sub big E, the east neighbor, plus minus V delta divided by two minus K phi sub S plus minus U delta divided by two K. W plus E delta divided by two minus K. So again, okay. Of course, you know, one assumption that we made here was that the grid spacing was even. So basically I assume that delta X is equal to delta Y equal to delta. Okay, plus four K P sub C is equal to Q at X sub C, Y sub C times delta squared. This is our interior cell equation. Two D finite volumes convection diffusion. All right, and so when you have a 2D problem with both convection and diffusion, you could straight up apply this equation here to get for the interior cell, okay? Right. Any questions on, uh, on, this, on this equation here? Okay. All right, so of course the next order of business is to, is to apply boundary conditions here, uh, but we only have five minutes left. Uh, and I really need to go to the bathroom. So 
I think we'll, I think we're going, we're going to go ahead and call this here for today. And so next time when we meet on Wednesday, we'll go ahead and do an exam for this. Uh, and, it, and I'll show you how to apply boundary conditions on this, uh, on this equation here. Okay. And then we'll go over the code just like we started with today. Uh, so that'll probably take about half the class. And then, you know, for the other half of the class, we'll start going over higher order convection speed, which is what you need for your final project. Okay. All right. So thank you guys for coming today. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, and I will see you all on Wednesday. See you guys. Thanks, guys. I go to the bathroom quick one. Nice. Yes. <clears throat>